Ben, welcome to our webinar. Thank you so much for participation and giving your valuable time to us. We would love to know more about your professional experience and your background. Over to you, Ben. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, for having me on. Um, yeah. So uh, my my background has has really just been in data in general for the last uh, five or six years. Really, I, I like to say I've kind of uh, played the whole pipeline um, in the sense that I've I've been part of the data engineering teams in some places. I've been, you know, data science as well. So I, I've really got a chance to kind of see, you know, data go from end to end. Um, so I've worked uh, first starting out really a lot in healthcare, um, starting out doing like healthcare analytics um, and data engineering. So I worked for a few companies. One was a hospital, one was a healthcare startup that uh, both were, you know, trying to do things like reduce patient readmission, um, detect when people were going to you know deal with more traumatic sorts of uh, basically incidences of diseases or something like that um, and so developing kind of models and algorithms both from the you know analytical side but also from the the data structure and modeling side and how you how you build kind of systems to support uh, analytics and data science um, that, that was kind of the goal and then and then kind of moving more into data science as I kind of went forward uh, just to kind of do a lot more of like a consulting approach. Um, that's where kind of Akron Analytics comes in, where uh, we kind of come in and you know using things like uh, our, my statistical background or um, you know just my my knowledge of data. We can kind of come in and, and help either develop models and custom kind of software solutions uh, using data science, um, implementing models, uh, or kind of coming in and we've also done a lot of like trainings, um, things like on Arima modeling or data science in general. Um, and so that's kind of been my general background. Great. Thank you so much, Ben, for such a valuable answer. And uh, here comes my next question. That is, could you please tell us what is data science? Um, sure, sure. So for what is data science, um, the way I kind of say it, ben, uh, Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, it'll be great if you can turn on your video. Sure. I mean, yeah. I, I'm going to just be sitting in my car, honestly. So, <laughs> no, worries, um, no worries. It'll be more interactive. Just that. All right. All right. So, let's see. Hold on. All right. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, okay. So, what is so data science? Uh, it's really just kind of I like to call it a combination of like having the, the discipline of science and having a research mindset and just applying it on like real world business problems. Um, so just having that kind of curious mindset and then applying what I like to say is just a discipline to it, which is the science aspect. Um, in the sense that, you know, it, it's like, you'll have a question, you know, you'll look at data, you have a question like, um, trying to think of a good example, like what, you know, something basic would be something like, well, what would increase, you know, someone wanting to purchase a product, right? Like having that, that interest and then having a theory about it, you know, having that, that hypothesis and then going forward and kind of developing uh, that hypothesis, developing kind of tests that would prove it, uh, whether it be true or false, um, and kind of figuring out what kind of information you need to kind of answer that question and how you're going to get it and how you're going to test it and prove it um, definitively that, you know, yes, whatever if you change you know the wording on this on this page from red to blue it's more likely to increase someone's purchase or if you're to show someone um this product it's more likely to increase the person's uh, probability of purchasing something so something like that is and testing that and proving that and and going through the rigor of, of typical scientific kind of processes um the one benefit today is you know the concept of having to go through very slow methodological like methodological kind of processes like you know in typical research environment where your n is typically like a thousand people you know here we have the ability to kind of you know have billions of people or millions of people worth of data that we already have and you can kind of test and prove uh, your hypothesis either before testing or or at least have a good idea before you start testing you know new uh, features or new ideas uh, out into the real environment so that's kind of my back my view of what kind of data science is and what it kind of does Great, that was such a lovely answer, Ben. Thank you so much. Ben, could you please tell us, like, uh, what is your typical day as a data scientist? Yeah, um, 
it's, again, my background kind of comes more from consulting. So there's definitely, uh, or right now specifically for data science and data science consulting. So it really kind of depends um, on the company uh, that we're working with. Usually typically, you know, there's a portion of it that involves going to the customer and figuring out what exactly they want um, and what exactly they need and what exactly they're looking for um, and what exactly will be valuable to them from a data science standpoint. Uh, you know, you're, you work with customers and clients that, that, have, that have an idea maybe of what they're wanting to do, but you kind of have to typically flesh it out and figure out what questions and what, what actions you want to take um, based off the data that you have. And I think that's usually where this is kind of a first step for a lot of uh, data scientists and data people in general is you, you have to figure out what are the questions that whatever you're doing is trying to answer. Um, you know, because you, you can build a dashboard, you can build um, an algorithm, or you can build a model. But you kind of need to know what the person's going to be doing with it and why the person needs it, like what actions are they going to be taking, um, because that kind of drives how you're going to kind of change what you do. Um, so that's kind of one part. So dealing more with like the personal, the customer, it could be an internal customer, it could be an external customer. Um, the next aspect is just more of the data kind of data profiling kind of portion where you're probably spending a lot of time you know, once you kind of know what you're probably going to be doing, looking at the data that you have or that your customer has and being like, okay, what data do they have? What does it look like? You know, what's kind of the different, you know, categories that you're seeing here? What are the different dimensions? And getting a good idea so you kind of can start seeing how a model will form. Because once you kind of have a general idea, you can kind of start seeing, okay, well, what values can we uh, rely on? What values can we see? And, you know, which ones are kind of accurate? Because sometimes, you know, you'll have data that's not accurate. Um, and so it's really good to kind of just profile your data and figure out what it looks like and have a general idea. And then you can start doing things like hypothesizing what features, what values are going to Im influence the end result. And so then you can start testing your model and building it and, and spending a lot more time in that general uh, regard. So, so it's kind of, those are kind of the general three things. Um, then probably also presenting the results is kind of that last part. So if you were to look at that, you know, you've got the customer side, you've got the data kind of profiling side kind of a modeling section and then kind of more of a, a person or like a presenting portion of it. Great. Thank you so much for the answer, Ben. So here's my next question. Uh, could you please uh, tell us about what education background is needed for an entry level data scientist job? Yeah. Um, so it, it's interesting because I think, I think it's definitely changed a lot in the last few years. Um, for, for many reasons, like it depends on the company. It depends on, on uh, you know, yeah, it really depends on the company and the role in particular. Uh, I think I've seen some, some companies, I think, have taken on the notion where uh, the term research scientist has kind of replaced the term data scientist in the sense that uh, they've kind of bumped it up and kind of shifted things over. Um, so they've, they put data scientists sometimes in a role of more of a data analyst with some Python and our background and they might not have a PhD, but they've, they've kind of got a general idea and then research scientists are the ones that have PhDs. So there's, there's kind of this split uh, that I've seen at companies like at Zillow and, and other companies where it, it really depends. Um, it just because data scientists or data sciences itself has become a little more accessible to a broader, I think, audience because of libraries, because of uh, libraries being like in Python libraries that make things a little easier. And so it's a little easier for someone with a data analytics background to kind of shift in um, into it. Uh, whereas research science, I think, is still very heavily uh, requiring someone with either PhD or a master's. Um, but again, it depends on the company. Where if the company is a lot more specialized in the sense that, uh, you know, they, their data scientist is a data scientist, um, which I think you'll see a lot more in companies like probably Google or Facebook or Twitter, then it typically still kind of has that master's or PhD kind of background. Great. Thank you so much for the answer, Ben. That was um, really helpful. I'm sure it, it is going to help all our attendees. So, uh, Ben, next question is, uh, R versus Python, which programming language is preferred? What do you think? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think it's definitely interchangeable for most people, at least for me. Like, I, I never tried to pick one or the other. I, I think I've always found R more just naturally tuned towards data science just because it's always been statistics based it's always like that's that's its goal so it's, it's really easy to use um and now that it i now that jupyter notebooks basically allows you to run r in it too it it pretty much makes like both to me feel about the same um i think python the one nice thing is 
if you want to oper operationalize something and and put it into actual code, um, it's much easier. Generally speaking, like you're not if it if you're you know doing some major implementation of a machine learning model, you're not going to use Python either. You're going to use something like Scala or C, like C. But definitely, if it's like an internal thing, like Python's just way easier to you know put into a data pipeline or something because it just it just fits in where R is definitely more of its own thing. R tends to be in its own environment and tends to run on, on its own instance. So it's just a lot harder to kind of shove it into um, a workflow. Uh, so, so R is great, I think, for research. I, I love it because it's, it's really easy. It's really kind of personally intuitive. Like I, I like to say it's like a little more complex than Excel. You know, it really is just kind of writing out um, uh, methods and inserting your data, whereas Python requires a little more, a little more understanding of, you know, programming, um, and, and especially when you start trying to put it into, again, data pipelines. Uh, so I think it really depends on the task that you're trying to do. If you're trying to do more research stuff, you know, I think R is much easier and just kind of naturally, you know, if you don't have to necessarily be a programmer to understand what you're doing, um, where if you're trying to like operationalize code and actually put it into a system, you know, Python definitely kind of wins out on, on that one. Thank you so much, Ren, for the answer. Ben, uh, could you please tell, is there any certification or course that an applicant can do to strengthen his or her job application for data scientist job? Any course or certification you suggest? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I guess that's, I've, I've never really picked one course. Uh, I, I think it depends on the person's background in the sense that, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of computer scientists go and take boot camps and, you know, really for them, the reason they take the data science boot camp, like, um, trying to, like a galvanize or something like that. The reason they do it is because they might know all the programming, but they learned, you know, none of the data science because data science was such a new concept or at least as a discipline has kind of been a new concept. And so there's, no real uh, program in a school like at, at a university that kind of teaches it. You know, master's degrees exist, but other than that, it's it's not as well taught. So I, you know, things like Galvanize are great. I think in general for people who already have a pretty sturdy uh, programming background, because you t tend to just need that top layer um, again to kind of at least do the basics for data science. Um, I've also again seen people go to Galvanize or something like Galvanize and. And they'll have an English background and then end up, again, working at somewhere like Zillow or, um, you know, Twitter or something like that. So I, I think, it, you know, those courses are great. Um, it just kind of shows that you tried or like, you you know, you're putting effort into uh, learning data science and you're, you're putting effort into, uh, you know, learning more about the craft and understanding. So it at least gets your foot in the door, typically. Fantastic, Ben. Um, thank you. The next question is? What is the career path of a data scientist? What do you think? Um, career path or anything. So, yeah, I saw this question. I was curious about this one. Um, I mean, you know, I, I guess it depends. Like, I think a lot of people, especially since data science has really just kind of come to, to being to the forefront in like 2012-ish, you know, up until that point, I think a lot of people were more of, a statistical background and they'd be a statistician or an analyst and then you know eventually this concept of data science kind of came forward but i think typically you know you, you're you're starting either as a very data focused person in general so again like a data engineer with some understanding of statistics can eventually float into it but i definitely think uh that tends to be the type of data scientists that come out really tend to be the based on your background. So people who are very research-based, um, you know, that, that, that career path kind of takes you easily into that more research scientist kind of portion of data science. So you're going to be doing, you're usually driven a lot more uh, by the scientific method, whereas people who maybe have more of a data background, like a BI or analyst, um, tend to kind of just know the basics and then kind of just build from there. But I, I, I don't think, I don't know, I'm, I guess I'm trying to I'm struggling to answer this specific question. Maybe just. Hmm. Great. Thanks, Ben. So what are the most common data science interview questions you must have come across? Yeah, yeah. Um, so specifically here, like, I would say there's a, there's a, 
two kind of sections I usually see. Um, one can tend to be more programming questions. The other tends to be more data science specific questions. So, and like conceptual. So uh, some questions that I've kind of come across are like, that you'll kind of get asked are things like, you know, can you tell me the difference between like precision and recall? Um, <clears throat> Or something along that nature where it's a little more tr just trying to test your statistical understanding like you know what's the difference between what's the p-value um so there's more conceptual questions where and that are really common because they're they, they're really good just to kind of get a gauge of do you understand the concept of data science do you understand kind of the, the ability or how to set up an experiment and what you're looking for in an experiment because in in many ways again with python and r it's really easy to run data and not know why you're running data and not really know what results you're looking for. And so I think one of the questions you'll see or the section of questions you'll see is understanding results and understanding what those results mean. Um, and so I think that's one kind of really common section of questions. So things like precision recall, p-value, um, and being able to explain those are, are really common kind of things that interviewers want to see. Uh, another thing I think is you'll also see is something uh, that I've seen is probabilistic questions. So they'll, they'll ask things about dice or something like that. Whereas again, it's more trying to get your understanding of statistics and, and trying to see, do you understand and can you kind of formulate how you'd set up a basic experiment from a statistical side and um, like, can you calculate, calculate out basic probabilities without having to kind of sit there and use your computer. So I think that's another section. And then finally, and I only put this in here because I've, I've had um, people that I've kind of helped and coached come back to me and tell me that this has happened to them in the sense that they've had companies like Microsoft ask them very specific programming questions where it's like, you know, do something like with a B tree, like, you know, traverse a, a binary tree or traverse a linked list, which I think is less common, but occasionally does happen. So I, I like to tell people like, know where you're going to go, know what they're going to ask, because, you know, the last thing you want to do is suddenly start getting programming questions because those are very, and not be ready for them. Because those can definitely throw people who are more data science background for a loop because you probably, you know, most data scientists might not know anything about programming um, from that standpoint, you know, algorithms like merge sort or something like that and getting that thrown in suddenly kind of can throw you for a loop. And that just, again, depends on the company and company. So I just tell people to make sure you know, you know, what type of questions you're going to get asked, you know, whether it's going to be programming, um, if it's Python, figure out what, like, what type of Python questions is going to be more operational, is it going to be more, you know, pandas related figure out where you're going to get questioned because again, these might be the common questions, but it really depends company to company, what they like to ask and, and what they like to see from their data scientists. Wonderful. Thank you for such an elaborative answer. <laughs> Thank you so much. So uh, we would love to know your views, you know, uh, about the difference between data scientists versus data analytics. Yeah. Um, I, I think one of the big things there uh, is, is the tools. I think, that tends to be very different in the sense that data analysts tend to be very good with SQL, um, probably good with Excel. Again, there's, there's this shift towards more people knowing Python, but I don't think, I think it's harder, or they, it might not be as clear where to apply it for most data analysts, because again, maybe they haven't had the, the chance to apply it to real problems, and it might not be necessary for the problems that they're facing. You know, they're not, they're not dealing with either the size, or they're not you know, creating experiments that they're trying to run um, in a production environment. Uh, whereas, you know, a data scientist is going to be doing things like, uh, again, they're still going to be doing SQL, but they're probably also going to be using Python and they're, or, or something where they're going to be testing things in a live environment and, and kind of, you know, from those tests, kind of reading the results and figuring out what to do next and, and, and providing kind of consultation to, you know, the team, you know, like, okay, based off these results, this is what I think we should do. Um, and it's, it's, it tends, I think, to be a lot more future looking, you know, for data scientists where analysts, I think, tend to usually be more backwards facing, you know, giving out, uh, you know, financial reports or giving out, you know, uh, possibilities for opportunities to save money, but, you know, maybe it's not as specific or maybe it's, maybe it's not as drilled down. Um, I think overall they should follow very similar methodologies. Like I think one of the things I wish I saw more data analysts do is, is follow a similar practice to data science only in the sense that, you know, ask a question, get some support from your data, um, and then, you know, have a conclusion at the end. Uh, again, the tools might be different for a data analyst and a data scientist, but I think having a similar methodology, because you're kind of doing a similar thing in the sense you're, you're both looking typically for opportunities to save money or increase uh, customer satisfaction or do something like that. It's just, again, it comes down a lot to the tools and kind of the, the understanding of, of data in general. 
Thank you, Ben. Must say you are a pool of knowledge in data <laughs> science. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Ben, uh, what do you think is the best job search strategy for data science jobs? Uh, I think I think it's everything. <laughs> no, uh, I know that's funny, but um, I I've, I've seen people you know spend months looking for jobs, uh, almost a year, and they they literally would do everything. They would write blog posts. They would have a GitHub. They would you know apply, go to mixers, and and it would take them forever. And but they eventually would get a job again, like at somewhere like Zillow or somewhere where you would think like, okay, that's you know a great place to be at. So. I really do say like, you know, you kind of have to do everything and you kind of have to keep yourself motivated. I think that's, that's the hardest thing. It's like, you, you really should do things like write blog posts and, 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 and put your resume out there to every job possible and reach out to people because it, you don't know which way is going to work. Um, and it, it's hard. I think that's the thing. It's like, it's really hard because, you know, it might take you six months. It might take you eight months. It might feel like nothing's happening. But again, you kind of have to just keep trying things and keep doing everything because one of the things will work and again you don't want to lose out on the chance to work somewhere just because you know you were you you wanted to give up that day and you're like well it doesn't seem to be working but you, you never know which one's going to work so again do pretty much everything write blog posts you know interview around practice go go to the meetups you, you never know where you're going to meet someone that's going to give you a job i so agree with you and believe me interview is the hardest part uh, of every uh, field i must say so uh, Ben, what do you think uh, the best books or resources for data science? Uh, yeah, so for books and sources, again, like I, I, I'm a big YouTube and uh, <laughs> a Stack Overflow fan. Um, I think those tend to be good sources. You know, if you, if you want to find a course on Coursera, I think, I, I don't know any of the specific ones, but I think, you know, you can generally find most of them work out pretty well as long as it comes from a decent university. Um, I don't remember which ones I would take. I, I know that I, I did when Coursera came out, that was like some of the first things I did would, would be taking them. Um, again, I also had like some background doing a lot of bioinformatics and epidemiology, so that, that kind of gave me more of that scientific background and, and like methodology. Um, Cause I think for, for a technical standpoint, you know, using Stack Overflow and um, other kind of Python or R resources online, you know, that, that's all you need. But from a methodology standpoint, I think it's really about finding either a course with people, like I, I really think you kind of need to be with people that kind of walk you through the method, methodology standpoint or, or working on a team as a junior data scientist or, or as a data analyst that, you know, tries to push themselves into uh, working with a data scientist. I think you kind of have to work with them to understand the methodology standpoint, because I think you can read a book, but it, it's really about kind of getting in there and doing the work. Great, thank you so much, Ben, for the answer. So Ben, we are really excited to know, uh, you know, your most interesting project that you have done as a data scientist. Yeah, um, I, think, I think for me, some of the most interesting, or the most interesting project I did was really working on patient readmission and trying to reduce it. Um, it really just had a, bunch of disparate data sources that kind of came in everything from credit card information to to patient information and like just trying to figure out all of this like trying to figure out who are who are these patients and what's kind of like what's is it socioeconomic like what's causing these people to kind of you know come back so quickly to uh, the hospital you know how can we improve these patients these patients lives basically and, and and really I think that's that's what made it most interesting to me it wasn't just again the disparate data sources it wasn't just you know, how many problems we faced, it was like, you know, at the end of the day, we were really trying to do something where it was like, okay, how do we make these people's lives better, right? Like, um, you know, trying to go beyond just selling them another toaster and figuring out how to, you know, in, you know, improve the bottom line. It was also like, but how can we, we improve these people's lives? You know, do we need to give them a telephone call and check up how they're doing? Do we need to change our, our patient training or like, our, like when people leave, they kind of get like training. Do we need to change something in that? You know, what needs to change? And doesn't need to change specifically for different people in different areas and different zip codes and like trying to figure out that whole kind of concept and figuring out what's the best methodology to move forward there. Um, I think that was kind of the most interesting. And again, it was also just kind of the most fulfilling because again, you're not just looking to try to increase a click on a button or something. You're looking trying to try to like improve something in real life. Very interesting. Thank you. So what challenges and opportunities do you face in your job as a data scientist? 
Uh, I think for me, the biggest challenges tend to be, <laughs> personally, tend to be soft skills. Um, you know, just trying to understand customers and trying to understand their needs and trying to, you know, translate what they're saying and make sure you have a full understanding and grasp as you move forward. Um, that's always, I think, the hardest thing, uh, at least personally for me. You know, once you, once I have an idea and a very, at least concrete-ish uh, idea of what I need to do, it's very easy. You know, for me, it's one of those things that uh, time will pass and I won't notice once I, I know exactly what I need to do, but until I kind of have a good understanding and, and a good kind of clear vision of what they're asking and what they want, it, that tends to be where I, I, I definitely struggle. It's like, okay, how do, I, how do I ask them the right questions? How do I push them in a certain way? How do I you know, make sure that this conversation is going in the right way and that I'm getting the right information that I need to move forward? And how do I make sure that we're both on the same page? Um, it's kind of that, that, that hard thing. And I think, again, that whether you're a, someone that's consulting or whether you're someone that's doing that internally, it's, it's kind of the same. You know, when you're internal, you're still trying, you're still working with managers and stakeholders and being like, okay, how do, how do we make sure that we're all on the same page? Do we do, do we draw diagrams? What questions do we ask? You know, and, and trying to make sure you move forward and getting a full picture of exactly what you need to do, or at least so that you can get to the next step and have another meeting and again, continue. Great. Thank you so much, Ben. So here comes my last question. That is uh, how to make your resume stand out for data science positions. Yeah, um, I, I think that's, it, it's really, it's, it's definitely, again, like you said, interviewing is kind of the hard part, um, especially when you don't have a huge experience to start out with. Uh, I think that's where, again, having projects that you can show, uh, whether that's, again, going on Kaggle or something like that and doing a project, like for your first job, you kind of just have to do whatever you can. Again, write some blog posts and put those on there. Um, do whatever you can do for side projects because you just need to be able to talk through something. Um, so having things that you can talk through and having those on your resume is probably the best things you can do, especially if it's your first, you know, your first data science job. Once once you have it and you've worked in data science for a while, you know, it, it kind of flows naturally. But those those first few examples are always hard. And so having some projects that you can talk through or something um, definitely needs to kind of be there. And again, if you can get an internship first, that's always something I would try to recommend people. Like, if you know you want to do data science, or even if you don't, you know, go get an internship at a tech company of some kind if you can, because that also makes you stand out way more than uh, just having nothing coming out of college. Great. Thank you so much, Fen, for the.